Fred West was born in a small town in Herefordshire, much Markle. He was the second of six children. From his account, sexual abuse of various kinds was common in the household. He claimed his father had sexual relationships with his daughters and taught him bestiality. It has been suspected that his mother started sexually abusing him when he was 12, though he never admitted to it and it has never been confirmed, just like the stories about his father. When he was 17, he was in a motorcycle accident that put him in a coma for a week, which led him to have a metal plate operated into his head and breaking one of his legs so badly it was permanently shorter than the other. Afterwards, he, had, he often had violent outbursts of anger and a bad temper. Two years after the accident, he hurt his head again when he stuck his hand up a girl's skirt and she pushed him down a fire escape. When he was 19, he was convicted of molesting a 13-year-old girl. However, he did not serve any jail time because his doctor said he suffered from epileptic fits. After this, he was sent to live with his sister and was practically disowned by the rest of the family. Fred eventually got a job, but was fired for stealing from his workplace. When he was 21, his family let him back into their lives and he moved back to Much Markle, where he resumed a romantic relationship with an ex-girlfriend, Catherine or Rena Costello. Rena was pregnant at the time with the child of a Pakistani man. They married and kept the child. To explain to everyone why the baby was half Asian, they said Rena lost the baby in childbirth and then they decided to adopt together. Fred and Rena married in November, only two months after getting back together, and then they moved to Scotland. Fred demanded sex from Rena daily, and he wasn't just interested in regular sex. The couple eventually had a child of their own in July 1964, a daughter they named Anne Marie. During their rocky marriage, Fred started working as an ice cream truck driver, a job that gave him access to plenty of young women. However, their life in Scotland came to an end when Fred accidentally ran over a four-year-old boy with his truck. They moved to Gloucestershire with Issa McNeil, who took care of their children, and Anna McFall, a friend of Rena's. He ended up getting a job at a slaughterhouse. When the marriage finally collapsed, Rena went back to Scotland alone, but came back in July 1966 because she missed her daughter, only to discover that Fred had started a relationship with her friend, Anna. In 1967, Anna became pregnant with Fred's child and tried to get him to divorce Rena. But in response, Fred killed, dismembered, and buried her. Rena finally left him a few months later, leaving their children with him. He is suspected to have killed again in January 1968 when 15 year old Mary Bastholm disappeared from a bus stop. After his mother died in February, he started committing a lot of petty thefts and changed jobs often. It was during a sting as a bakery truck driver that he met his future wife and accomplice, Rosemary Letts. Rosemary was born in Devon in 1953. Her household was troubled and abusive. Her father was a schizophrenic who constantly disciplined her, her siblings, and her mother. While her mother had been pregnant with Rosemary, she had received electroconclusive therapy as a treatment for her severe depression. Growing up, she had been sexually abused by her father. When she was a teenager, she became more sexually active and was even caught getting into bed with one of her younger brothers and sexually fondling him. Due to her figure and her father's rules, it prevented her from dating boys her own age. She ended up pursuing relationships with older men where she lived. One of them took advantage of her and raped her. When she was 15, her mother finally had enough of her husband's abuse and took Rosemary and moved in with one of her adult daughters and her husband. Rosemary started spending time with male companions even more. Later the same year, she surprisingly moved in back with her father. Not long after, she met Fred, who was 12 years her senior. In spite of the way she had been treated by her father, he strongly objected to her seeing Fred and even went to the trailer park where he lived with his two daughters and threatened him. While Fred did several stints in jail for theft and failure to pay his fines for previous offences, Rosemary became pregnant with his child, a girl they named Heather, and took care of all his children. Because of her temper problems and resentment about caring for children who weren't hers, she ended up treating them quite badly. In the summer of 1971, Rosemary apparently snapped completely and killed Charmaine. After severing the fingers and toes from the body, Fred buried it under the kitchen floor. In August 1971, Rena appeared when she was looking for Charmaine. 
Fred is suspected of having killed her, as when the body was found, only the fingers and toes were cut off and were missing. Though they married on January 29, 1972, Fred encouraged Rosemary to have sex with other men, both for money and for fun, and often watched her through a peephole. He also took erotic photos of her and posted them in Swinger magazines as ads for prostitution. In 1972, June, they had another daughter together, Mae West. In order to make room for their expanding family, they moved to 25 Cromwell Street, where they carried out their rapes and murders. Rosemary continued working as a prostitute from their home, and Fred watched, also installing a red light and telling the children not to enter. Over the years, she gave birth to seven more children. Another may have been conceived by Rosemary and her own father, who kept engaging in incest with her even after she gave birth to her fourth child. The other three, who were mixed race, were all fathered by her clients. In October 1972, Fred and Rosemary hired a young woman named Caroline Owens to work for them as a nanny for their children. They kept making sexual advances on her, but she declined every time. One night in December, after they both unsuccessfully tried to seduce her, she tried to leave only to be held captive overnight. When Fred threatened to let some of his friends have her and that he would kill her, she complied. The next day she was released and she pressed charges. However, Fred managed to convince the courts that the acts she was forced into had been consensual, so he and Rosemary were only fined $50 for indecent assault. Spanning over six years, they killed at least eight young women who had made their way to 25 Cromwell Street as lodgers or employees together. The first was Linda Gow, a seamstress they knew personally. Next was Carol Ann Cooper, who had disappeared while walking home from a movie theatre. In December, Lucy Catherine Partington disappeared from a bus stop while on her way home after Christmas. She was murdered by Fred and Rosemary, who had abducted her, held her captive for a week over New Year's, raped and tortured her, and then killed her. On January 3rd, Fred was treated for a laceration, which is believed to have been inflicted while he was dismembering Lucy. From the years 1974 to 1979, there were five more women. Therese Sargenthaler, Shirley Hubbard, Juanita Marion Mott, Shirley Ann Robinson and Alison Chambers had met the same fate as the others. It is not known if the Wests killed more over the following years. If they did, the bodies were not buried on their property. Some of the girls are known to have been abducted, raped and then released. While committing these murders, Fred was sexually abusing his daughter from his first marriage, Anne Marie West. She eventually became pregnant, but the pregnancy had to be terminated due to it forming in her fallopian tube. Once she left home, he started to abuse Heather and May. Fred disposed of the victims by burying them under the garage of the house or in their garden. To cover up the frequent burials, he said he was doing home improvements and to get supplies he would often steal. Even though he was often brought to the police's attention for this reason, his killings eventually went unnoticed. The couple came close to being exposed in 1986 when Heather had told her friends about the abuse she was suffering. One of them ended up telling the police and the investigating officer Hazel Savage had heard of Fred while he was in a relationship with Rena Castello. When another girl raped by Fred came forward, the police obtained a search warrant. In August, they searched the house for evidence of child abuse. Fred was arrested for rape and sodomy of a minor and Rose was arrested as an accomplice. While they were being processed, their younger children were placed in the care of the government. While he was in custody, Rosemary had become depressed and attempted suicide, but one of her sons had saved her. On the other hand, the rape case fell apart when the victims had backed out. However, the police officer was becoming very suspicious of Fred's past, the disappearance of Heather and the results of the interviews of, from all the children, especially that they had been threatened by Fred that they would be buried like Heather under the patio. She was able to obtain another search warrant and dug up the property. The task was simplified when Fred confessed to Heather's murder in custody. When all these human bones started to crop up, he confessed to having committed the murders alone in order to protect Rosemary. However, he wouldn't actually admit to raping any of his victims, saying instead that they wanted to have sex with him. The bodies of Anne McFall and Charmaine West came to light as well. Seeking to protect herself, Rose cut off all contact from her husband. On December 13, 1994, he was charged with a dozen counts of murder. 
On New Year's Day, he hanged himself in his cell at Western Green Prison with a knotted bedsheet. His body was cremated and his funeral unattended except for his five children. Rose was also put on trial in the end, first for rape but then for murder as well. She never confessed to any crimes and the evidence against was largely circumstantial. An important witness, Janet Leach, Fred's appropriate adult, who revealed that Fred had told her that Rose had been involved in the murders and even killed Charmaine West and Shirley Robinson on her own. On November 22nd, 1995, Rose was found guilty of 10 murders and sentenced to life in prison. Though she maintains her innocence, she announced that she will not try to appeal her conviction. In 1996, 25 Cromwell Street was completely demolished and the site turned into a pathway.